Hi there, uh, my name is Enrique and I've recently completed my PhD in Luisa Figueiredo's lab. And in Luisa's lab we study the parasite Trypanosoma brucei, which as you may know, is a parasite transmitted by the bite of a tsetse fly, and is responsible for causing sleeping sickness in humans and nagana in livestock in sub-Saharan Africa. And both diseases are extremely debilitating and they do lead to the death of the host if left untreated. And although this parasite can be found in very high numbers in the blood of infected individuals, it really seems to enjoy jumping out of the bloodstream and into the fatty tissues of the host. And actually, quite often, you can find more parasites in the fatty tissues of the host than in the bloodstream, which has for a long time been considered to be the main reservoir of the parasite within the host. And considering this, what we questioned in my thesis was, really, why do parasites accumulate in the fat to such high extent? And we wanted to understand this in essentially two different angles. On the one hand, we wanted to know whether the adipose tissue is a place where the immune response can't quite find and eliminate the parasite, or is the adipose tissue a metabolically favorable environment for the parasites, especially as it is rich in nutrients such as fatty acids. And ultimately, we also wanted to understand how invasion and colonization of the adipose tissue may affect the development and severity of disease itself and eventually whether the host was more resistant or more susceptible to infection dependent on the parasite's presence in the fat. So, for the most part, we used mouse models of infection to chase these questions. And for this we used mice with an impaired immune system or with deficient metabolic pathways and we then assessed the impact of these factors in the mouse's uh, ability to withstand infection as well as in the amount of parasites that were present in different tissues. So, to check whether the immune system was responding to the parasite's presence in the fat, we isolated the adipose tissue of mice at different time points post-infection, and we quantified the quantity and the quality of the immune cells and parasite-neutralizing antibodies that were present there. And broadly speaking, what we found is that uh, as infection progressed, so too did these parasite-eliminating factors accumulate in the adipose tissue, and we could indeed find an increase in all immune cell types and soluble molecules that you would normally associate with an immune response capable of eliminating T. brucei parasites, which really suggests that the adipose tissue isn't a place where the parasite can hide from the immune response. So, in fact, uh, when we used immune-compromised mice, we could clearly observe that these mutant mice were unable to control parasite numbers in the adipose tissue, which really highlights that the immune response is indeed capable of finding and eliminating the parasites in the fat. And what was really interesting is that this immune response actually was extensively modulating the behavior of adipocytes themselves, which are the cells in our adipose tissue, in our fat, that store uh, lipids as a form of energy. And indeed, uh, this immune response was making these adipocytes uh, really break down the fat that is contained within. Uh, a fat which, is, which are triglycerides, the main way in which we store fat in our adipose tissue. This increase in breakdown, which is called lipolysis, was responsible for the observed severe loss of fat mass that is a hallmark of a T. brucei infection. So we went ahead and checked whether this breakdown of fat had any impact on the course of infection, and to do this we used a mouse mutant that lacks a protein essential for the breakdown of these triglycerides, and using this mutant model that is unable to uh, break down this form of fat, we found that these mice retained very, very large adipocytes and they really didn't seem to lose much fat mass during infection. And what's really interesting is that when these adipocytes were unable to secrete these vast amounts of fatty acids, more parasites accumulated in the fat. And importantly, this metabolic pathway really seemed to be important for the development of disease as mice uh, were able to survive longer if they were able to efficiently break down triglycerides. So, altogether, in this work we concluded that during a T. brucei infection there is a specific and quite robust immune response mounted in the adipose tissue responding to the presence of the parasite and that this immune response is actually capable of directly eliminating the parasite. But additionally, this immune response also reprograms the adipocytes themselves and enables them to secrete vast amounts of fatty acids that end up being toxic for the parasite that is present in the fat. In turn, this metabolic reprogramming of adipocytes is also responsible for the loss of fat mass that we observe all throughout infection. And ultimately, we hope that this work supports the future study of tissue-specific interactions in infectious diseases as a way of uncovering mechanisms 
of controlling pathogens and of mitigating the severity of infectious disease as a whole.